What's up, friends? Dan Vega here, Spring Developer Advocate at VMware. So I recently put out a video on how to read JSON files in Spring Boot, and I thought it was a fun little tutorial. I took some data that I was pulling from one system and had to read it into a Spring Boot application. So I thought that was something that would be interesting to share. Turns out I got some really good feedback, so thank you guys for that. I got a couple of comments though that I wanna address today. One of which was, what is that JSON node object you're working with? Uh, what does that API look like? Why are you using that particular class? So I wanna address that today. I also wanna address a comment that I got with, hey, that was kind of ugly. I think it would look a little bit better if we wrote a custom deserializer. And I agree, uh, there are certain situations where I would just map my JSON to like records in my system, but then there are times when I would just write a custom deserializer. So that's what we're gonna do today. I wanna create just a very simple application. We'll take that same JSON data and I wanna simplify it down and talk about the process. Like, hey, can I map this JSON to a bunch of records? Um, it might get ugly at first. Uh, what's the next step? How can I just use something like JSON node to kind of traverse the JSON and get the exact data that I need? And then finally, we'll write a custom deserializer. So I thought this was a, a really good example of diving a little bit deeper into using Jackson for serialization and deserialization in the Spring Boot app. So with that, let's head over to start.spring.io. All right, so this is gonna be a pretty simple app for us to get started with. I'm gonna choose Maven. You can choose whatever version of Spring Boot you want. I'm gonna give this a group name of dev.danvega and we'll call this a custom deserializer. That looks right. And we'll choose Java 17 jar. And we only need one dependency for this. So I'm gonna bring in the web dependency. The only reason I'm bringing in the web dependency is because that transitively brings in a lot of the Jackson support. So if you didn't wanna use web and you just wanted to like write some tests against this, you could probably just get away with using Spring Core and, and bringing in Jackson yourself, but this makes it a little bit easier. Uh, so with that, we can go ahead and generate our project. I'm gonna go ahead and do that, which is going to download a zip file. I'm gonna open this up in IntelliJ IDEA. You can open it up in whatever IDE or text editor you're most comfortable with. Uh, with that, let's open it up and write some code. All right, so we're gonna kind of pick up where we left off in the last video, but I'm gonna really kind of start from scratch. So it's a combination of both. If you didn't watch the last video, don't worry about it. You can grab the source code uh, in the GitHub repository in the description below. I'm going to start with a directory under source main resources called data. And I'm gonna put a file in there. Again, you can grab this from the repository below called blogpost.json. The idea is that this is something I pulled out of my own website using a GraphQL API. And I thought it was interesting because it was some JSON data that doesn't exactly line up to uh, some components or some objects in my system, right? So this, was a, this is a very real scenario where you're gonna get some JSON where it doesn't exactly line up to things and I thought we would take a look at how we handle this. So let's go ahead and do this. We're gonna, I'm just gonna write some tests. This will be the easiest way to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with an at JSON test. This will be a slice test for a JSON. That's what we're working with. It'll only bring in the relevant bits that we need and not start the entire application context up, which in the, you know, in the midst of this application doesn't really matter because it's pretty small, but as you get into bigger applications, this will matter. So the first thing that I need is I need a I, I need the resource that we just created. So that blog post JSON, I need access to it. So I'm gonna say at value, I'm going to say that this is going to be a class path and we are going to get at data slash blog post dot JSON and we'll call this, this is of type resource uh, from, yep, from there and we'll call this blog post JSON. So part of that at JSON slice test will also give me the ability to auto wire in our object mapper. So this is from Jackson. This is what we are going to use to kind of read that JSON data. Finally, I just want uh, access to uh, the string variant of that file. So we're gonna read it in and yeah, I don't wanna do that, but I'm just gonna get the JSON and we'll talk about how we can read it in. So I'm gonna write a quick context load. This is, hey, everything that we're doing here, we wanna make sure that what we need in this uh, particular test is available. So I'll say assert not null 
and I would just want to make sure that our object mapper is available and let's go ahead and import that um, with that we should have everything we need to go ahead and run our first test and okay it's test passed uh, that's a good start so now what I need is a setup method let's go ahead and generate a setup method and what we're going to do in here is, uh, well, yeah, that's pretty close. Um, what I want to do is I want to say the JSON is equal to a new string. What we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, read all the bytes from there. Um, from Yep, that's exactly what I want to do. So that should be everything. This is needs to throw an exception. And that will give us exactly what we need. So this is the JSON. This is the string format of that file. And the reason that we want this to be a string is because we don't have to read the file every single time, right? We're in a test. We just want to get uh, the string representation of that JSON because that's all we're going to use to write some tests against. So now let's go ahead and maybe open this up over here. Let's see if we can get this. Oh, no, nope. I want this side by side so we can take a look at it. So let's put this over here. That will give us a good uh, indication of what we need to do here. So I have um, this JSON of this uh, particular file and we need to go ahead and find a way to read that in and map it to some objects, right? So how could we do that? So let's take a look at the object mapper. So the object mapper is a way to go ahead and read that JSON. So I'm going to read value. You can see you could take a URL file. We use an input stream before. Uh, I'm just going to use a string, so string content. So I'm going to choose that JSON string that we have. And now we need to give it a type. So how can we map everything in this JSON file to a type? Hmm. So we don't really have a type to represent that yet, but let's start going down that path first because I think this is, uh, you know, most of the time the path that we might go down. So I'm going to start, I need a uh, an object that starts with uh, something that has a key of data. So how can I do that? So first I'm going to create, let's say, a um, blog post wrapper. And we'll go ahead and call this a record. And let's do this over here. And now what this will take in is this is going to take in uh, something called data. So we'll say data, data. And then I'll go ahead and create an object that looks like that. So we'll say data. And this is a record. And what is inside of data? We have something called all post. So I'll say all post. And if we go ahead and create all posts, all right, so all posts is going to have an array of edges or a list of edges. So I'm going to say a list of something called an edge and we'll call this edges, right? So now we need to create an edge and um, an edge is really just going to have something, uh, again, I want this to be a record just simplifies things and the record components in here, we're gonna have something called a node and we'll call that node. And now we need a node. So we're gonna uh, create a record called node. And what is a node? A node is really the blog post. So this is going to contain things like our ID, title, slug, and the date is actually in a string format, so we'll keep it a string for now. Uh, the time to read, right? Uh, and then we need a list of something called a tag, and we'll call this tags. And now we can create a tag. This is going to be a record. This is just going to have a title. Okay, so I think that's everything. Let's make sure that works. Let's make sure that works. This looks pretty good, but this was kind of a pain in the butt, right? Do I really need something in my system called a blog post wrapper or this data or all posts or even edges? Like this is this is going down a road that um, I don't really want to go down because I don't need these objects in my system. All I really care about is the blog post, right? 
So let's back out of here. Let's close a lot of these, but let's see if this works. So I want to make sure that what we're trying to do here works. So now what we could say is the type that we're going to get back when we read this is going to be a, a blog post wrapper, right? So what does that mean? Let's create a var from that. That will give us that. Let's just try and uh, output our blog post wrapper. So um, let's go here and then let's run our test, our context loads test. This will run before that. And um, nope, we are getting an error because data, let's figure out what's wrong with data. So our blog post wrapper references our data application, which is, oh, where did that come? That is our issue. We want to import dev.danvega.customdeserializer.data from there, not some weird data class. So let's go ahead and run that again. And now this works. And you can see this blog post wrapper has something in there called data, which has an all post, which has edges, each edge has a node, and a node has all of the post data. So this works, but again, uh, this isn't, I don't like this, because we had to kind of create all of these wrapper classes to, to kind of line up with what our JSON data look like. And again, it'll work, but it's not the greatest way to kind of get there, right? So what are, what are our options? So let's kind of back up here and say, let's remove this. And now when we are reading in that object mapper, if we are not going to use something like the blog post wrapper, which I am not, I'm going to actually, let's just get rid of all these. Uh, I don't need any of these. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of them. So if I'm not going to use those, what, what type am I going to return from this? Well, as we mentioned in the last video, there is something called a JSON node. So we can use that. So what is a JSON node? Let's jump into that class and take a look. So this is a base class for all JSON nodes, which form the basis of a JSON tree um, that Jackson implements. One way to think of these nodes is to consider them similar to a DOM node in XML DOM trees. So this is cool. Um, as a general design rule, most getters are included in the base class, so you can traverse the structure without typecasting. This is very important because if you had to like typecast everything, this would get very messy. The, the code would be messy and probably really unreadable. So if we look at the structure of this, we can start to see that there are a lot of methods in here. So we can do things like check the size, is it empty? Is it a container node? Is the node that we're working with an array? We can get a particular node by its integer index or by the string name. So this is going to be helpful in getting at particular nodes in that tree. You can take a look at path and on and on and on. I would spend some time taking a look at this class to see what's available to you uh, as you're working with JSON. I'm going to look at just a couple methods that you may find helpful. So let's say, let's go ahead and let's turn this into a var. We have a JSON node. What can I do with it? So the JSON node has, if we just print this out, so let's just do JSON node dot us out. And if we print that out and rerun our application, we're just going to get the uh, JavaScript representation of it. What if we wanted something a little bit prettier that looked like JSON? There is a pretty string in here. So if we run this again, this time we'll see like the actual pretty string that looks like a JSON. So just something to note that if you want to get some something uh, a little bit more formatable, uh, you can use that. So now what I want to do is I want to start to get at uh, some of the nodes in there. So um, if we use the JSON node, we looked at some of the methods in there, and one of them in there is get, and so we can get by a string. So we can go ahead and access something like data, and if we go ahead and output that, 
Uh, let's go ahead and run this again. Now we're just going to be into there and we're no longer at the top container. We're in the all post. Now the all post is kind of the root. So that's cool. We can start to get different nodes in the tree if we want. Now you can't do something like this. You can't say all post edges like that's not going to work. That's going to return a null. But what you can do is you can say um, you can start to chain these together. So I can say get data, get all posts, get edges. So edges is that array of nodes, right? And then I can just say for each, um, I'm going to go ahead and system.out.println, right? So that should give me what I need. Um, but it doesn't look like it did. Um, so let's see. Get, oh, we don't need to do this. That's why. All right, so now we are getting the data. We are getting the all posts. We are getting the edges. And again, the edges is going to return. Uh, we are missing something here. Sorry. Um, the edges is the uh, array, so the collection of nodes. But again, the node is just the actual blog post. So let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see we get all of the individual nodes. So for each one, we printed out that node line. So as you can see, um, working with JSON node will allow you to start to traverse the tree and really get at everything as you need it to be. And so I did this in the last video and we wrote a bunch of custom code to basically walk through that data structure, pull out the bits that we care about. And from there, we were able to create some objects like a blog post object and use that to write to a database. So that worked out well. Uh, again, one of the comments I got was, hey, that looks a little messy. Wouldn't a custom deserializer work better? And yes, that is exactly uh, what we're going to cover today. So what does that look like? So instead of having to kind of traverse all of this, we're going to say, hey, when you need to deserialize uh, this thing, uh, I'm going to provide a class to do it for you. And essentially, we're going to do this in there. But now we don't. Now, if we need to do it in two different places, we have a class to do it. We're not kind of just kind of rolling our own. So let's look at how we can do that. So what I want to do is create a couple classes first. So I'm going to create a record for something like blog post, or actually let's just call it our blog. And this is going to have a record. Now this could have other information in it, like, I don't know, the title, the author, you know, other metadata about the blog. But for this case, I'm just going to say, hey, this blog has a list of something called posts, and we're going to call this posts. So what we can do is go ahead and create a new record called post. And again, this is going to represent the, um, the post, uh, all that information that we're getting back. So things like ID, title, slug. We'll have a local date for the um, date. We'll have um, an integer for time to read. We'll have um, a, just a string representation of the tags. So this could be a list of tags, but I'll just take whatever tags, so like Spring Boot, comma, Spring Cloud, and just use those as a string. So that's it. That's our post and our blog. So now we have a list of posts, and now we have two types that this is okay, I'm okay with this. Now I have two types in my system that I'm going to work with. I don't have a bunch of arbitrary posts just for the sake of mapping to some JSON data, right? So what I need to do is I want to create a custom deserializer. So I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna create a new Java class and we're gonna call this our blog deserializer. Um, so we'll create this as a class and this is going to extend so this, you can go a couple of different routes on this. There is a, um, in Jackson, there's a STD deserializer. You can go this route and use this class. 
But if you do it this way, then you'll have to go register this as a custom deserializer with the blog record. Uh, if you want to take advantage of Spring and kind of stay in Spring's world, you can uh, extend the JSON deserializer, and this is going to be of type blog. So once you do this, you need to implement a method called deserialize, and this is where kind of all of the magic is going to happen. So let me just rename this to parser and this to context. Uh, just seems a little easier. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to get at that tree and say, hey, when you, when you get that object, when you get that JSON object, here's how I want you to deserialize it. So we're going to start off by using the parser to get a codec. And from there, we can read the tree. So this is going to give us a tree node. Um, in this case, I don't care. Oops. Um, parser, sorry. In this case, I just want this to be a JSON node, and that's fine. That can be a JSON node. We just looked at JSON nodes, so we know how to work with that, right? So now what we can do is we can get the things we care about. So the first thing that I care about are the edges. So if I say JSON node, edges is equal to JSON node get data all post edges, right? So that is the uh, way that we can get at that information. Now, you probably want to put some safe um, something in here to say, hey, uh, if we come across this and this doesn't exist, these these data structures don't exist in that JSON. Like we want to we want to catch those errors if they happen, but for now, I'll just leave that as is. So then I'm going to start with and um, I'm going to start with a list of posts, and we'll call this posts. And this is a new array list. And from there, I can say, hey, if edges that is array, then we can go ahead and traverse through there. So I'll say. Um, we have a JSON node of an edge in our edges, right? So for each of those, I want to iterate over that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a post from that. So how do I do that? Well, again, I'm going to say, hey, um, wait, that's the edge, right? So we need the node itself. So, so if we go back here, then we're going to be in here. I need the that's each edge. Now I need to get the node itself. So now I'm going to also say JSON node. Node is equal to, I don't know what's going on there, but I want to say edge dot get node. So now I have the node itself. Now I can create a post. I can say post post equals new post. And now I need to kind of load that constructor up with all of the different um, properties, right? So let's just go ahead and save some time here. I'm going to throw some data in here. We did this in the last video, so if you want to watch that. So for each node, I'm going to get the ID, the title, the slug. I want to talk about the date in a second, uh, the time to read, and then the tags. So now, this is where like writing a custom deserializer really comes in handy because now we can like handle certain situations. So I have something like a date and I want to extract the date from it. Again, I'm just going to copy some methods here to save us some time. But now I have a method where I can take that JSON node and do whatever I want with it. In this case, I want to get the date as text because it's string coming over the wire. And then I want to format it using a particular pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and um, create a pattern here. And we can say, here's our date pattern in case we need to go ahead and use it again. So now we have a date. Now, I also want to go ahead and extract the tags. And this will give me the ability to say, hey, from the node, look for a field called tags. And if we have that, let's use a string joiner with a delimiter of comma. And let's go through there and create a comma separated list of tags. So now I get to really have full control over when you hand me this JSON data, here's how I'm going to deserialize it. And I really, really like this. So once I have the post, 
Now I can say, hey, posts.add uh, post, and that will um, give me the, that'll, that'll basically allow me to have all of the posts. Then down here, all I can do is say, hey, give me a new blog, so that blog record that we created, and then we're gonna pass in some posts. So that post will either be an empty array list or a collection based off all the data we just traversed. Okay, so now with this custom deserializer, again, because we're using Spring, we don't need to come over here and say uh, JSON deserialize using something like that. Um, you would have to do that if you're just using the, um, the Jackson class. So um, with the JSON component here, we can kind of avoid all of that. So let's do that, JSON component. Uh, we should be good to go. So now if we go back to our tests, now let's get rid of this. Now let's get rid of JSON node. We're not gonna be working with the JSON node. Now we can say the type that we're going to return from this is a blog, right? So a blog.class. And now when you ask when you ask Jackson to deserialize that data to a blog, it's going to use your custom deserializer. So uh, at least that's the plan. Let's go ahead and cross our fingers. Everybody do it with me. One, two, three. If we did everything right, oh yes, we did it. Um, so that's awesome. So now what we can do is we can say uh, var, um, we'll just call this blog, and now we have a blog object. So we can say blog dot uh, posts dot for, uh, and actually let's, we're not gonna do this. We can say blog dot post dot for each, dot for each, print them out. So if this works out, it should just kind of iterate over those and print each of those out, which it did. And each post has things like ID, title, date, time to read, and tags. And you can see we have our comma separated tags there, which is really nice. So cool, I think that's all I wanted to cover today. Uh, again, I wanna thank everyone for their feedback in the previous video, which really kind of led me to say, okay, let's step back and take a look at JSON node. What is that? What does it do? Also, how can we go ahead and create a custom deserializer? So I think the other thing that comes up with this is an obvious question of like when to use which. Um, that really depends. So if you can create simple mappings to map to the JSON that you're reading in, then go ahead and do that. But as you saw at the beginning of this video, when I went down that route of creating all these different objects in the system just to line up to that particular JSON data, then in that scenario, I think you know writing your own custom deserializer makes a lot of sense. So hey, I hope that was helpful. If it was, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, friends, happy coding.